Hello and welcome to the channel today. I'm Will and I'm going to be talking about my reading plans for the season of autumn. Summer was awesome. I've done a video about that on the channel already talking about kind of my summer wrap up, my favourite reads, how many books I read, how many pages, diving into all of the stats. But today I'm here to talk about what I'll be reading about in autumn. My reading will kind of change because I'm heading back to uni. So of course reading this drowning under all the work but I signed up for it myself so I can't really complain but that means there'll be a bit of a transition period going back to university. So I'm saying autumn, of course September, October and November. And without meaning to, I've actually got eight books for September, seven for October and six for November. So it kind of worked out how I'm planning because November I know is kind of the first exam season of the year where I'll have assessments due in in November and so of course that probably means I'll have less time for reading. That will correlate and then at the end of November I might be able to pick a few more reads more tailored to things I'd read in summer, maybe a bit more fantasy-esque. And so that's what might be coming in November but let's start chronologically of course and talk about what I'll be reading in September. So I'm cheating a little bit because I've already started a few of these but yeah, let's dive into it. We've got Ree Long's Fantasy Game Ready for Uni, the whole lot, the whole shebang, and some new releases as well. So first up, I mentioned Ree Long's. That is, of course, to do with The Shadow of the Gods. The Bloodsworn Saga Ree Long has just begun over on the Brothers Gwyn. And it is just incredible seeing how many people are participating in this Ree Long. People who are rereading it and are picking up on new things they didn't notice the first time around. Those who are reading it for the first time and they are just blown away by the world of Papa Gwyn. It is just beyond awesome. And yeah, it just makes me again a proud uh, Papa Gwyn son. And it's incredible seeing all the love that's been showered on this book. And I think this is the fourth time I'm reading it. And once again, I'm just engrossed and hooked. And so this will be a book that I'm not reading like normally I'd just kind of blitz through a book physically. I wouldn't pick up any other physical books during that time. But this I will be kind of dipping into, reading a few chapters here, a few chapters there, so I spread it throughout the month of September. Then I'm currently listening to Fire From Heaven by Mary Renault. This is book one of her Alexander the Great duology, I want to say. I'm not sure how many books, actually. But it's historical fiction. I believe it was written in the 1950s. She is called one of the queens of the genre. And I'm really enjoying it so far. She's got a wonderful writing style. She really is someone you can tell is a master of her craft. This is a book, book one anyway, is about Alexander growing up amidst the turmoil of his parents' marriage. So we've got Philip of Macedon, of course, and then his wife, who he's kind of estranged from. And both parents are pulling Alexander in very different directions in terms of which parents to support, which cultures to be raised on, which beliefs to follow. And I'm just getting into about the halfway mark of this, you're really feeling that kind of pressure on Alexander and this is quite romanticized because so far at least Alexander seems a bit like the perfect person he's just a wonderful child which I'm not sure how that correlates to the quite psychopathic mass murderer mass conqueror that we see in history so maybe it continues to be romanticized or maybe there's a key event that acts as a catalyst for what is to come I'm not sure but either way I'm enjoying Fire From Heaven and it's a great first book so far from Mary Reno that I've picked up. Then talking about Audible listens, I will talk about what was voted for me on the Patreon for me to read in September, and that is Dungeon Crawler Carl. My brother Ed is currently listening to this and he said it's really great, really enjoying it. And so I thought, you know what, I'll put that on the list for what I might read in September, let the Patreons decide, and that by far won the vote. And so I will be picking that up in the month of September for sure. This is, I think it's been picked up, traditionally published now, but originally it was self-published and it is set, I think, in the modern day and it's someone who is captured somehow and he's put into a dungeon that there's 18 to get through and it's a fight for survival. It's meant to be highly entertaining but with a lot of hidden depth as well and great characterization. So what more can you ask for? Sounds like it'd be a great palate cleanser and the audiobook is meant to be brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to diving into that. And thank you also to Tutor Ramble for really pointing it out to me and my brother. And then next up, I've got a book I've been wanting to read for quite a while and a Patreon very kindly got it signed 
for me. And so what book is that? It is The Daughter's War by Christopher Buellman, a 2024 release, a prequel to The Black Tongue Thief, but it's meant to be very different in tone and atmosphere. Both Papa Gwyn and my brother Ed have read and absolutely adored The Daughter's War. Both have said it is one of their books of the year. And that is just high praise. Maybe I'll be the third Gwyn member to absolutely love this book. I wouldn't be surprised. The goblins in this are meant to be absolutely terrifying. And there are war corvids, which I'm not 100% sure what they are, but they sound pretty cool. This is just meant to be brilliant writing and is just meant to be an incredible fantasy. My brother Ed just said that this is not reignited his love for reading because he's had that, but it's hit the next level. And it's made him just want to binge more and more fantasy. And he's also started reading more by Christopher Buellman as well and said that he is fast becoming one of his favourite authors. And so that's incredibly high praise. I've learned to trust Ed on many a book and I think that this will be the latest to that pile. And thank you to uh, our Patreon, Ohio Ed, not my brother Ed, for such a wonderful gift and for this incredible signed copy of The Daughter's War. It is so kind and I'm very grateful to have this copy and I can't wait to dive in. And then going to talk about some releases for September. I think I've got three on the list. I've got Henry V by Dan Jones, self-explanatory by the title. It's non-fiction about the monarch Henry V who most people will recognise through his role in Agincourt. He was the king who kind of led English forces into France and he was expected to lose pretty swiftly. He was quite outnumbered in a bad situation tactically and strategically. And he emerged victorious, but he was quite a ruthless king. And there's much to dive into Henry V, who is considered to be one of the most successful British monarchs. And who better to do that analysis than Dan Jones, the awesome non-fiction and fiction writer who is one of my favourite historians out there. So that is coming out, I believe, on the 12th of September. I might be wrong, but it's definitely around that mark. And then another September release is Intermezzo by Sally Rooney which I believe Intermezzo, someone asked me what the title meant and I think someone commented that it's a chess move where you're at a crossroads. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's something to do with chess and chess is on the cover, so that made sense. But this is Sally Rooney and that's all I need to hear to pick up her books. I've read three before. I'm going to read another one. Normal People and Beautiful World, Where Are You? are two of my favourites of all time. I also enjoy conversations with friends, but just not as much. But her latter two releases have just struck a chord in my heart and remained with me. And Intermezzo, it sounds like a great premise. It's about two brothers who are kind of distanced, very different, but they're being brought back together and it's about their relationship. Of course, with Sally Rooney, there'll be many other aspects brought into the mix with her right, wonderful writing style, incredible dialogue, and just amazing storytelling abilities. And so that's Intermezzo, really looking forward to diving into that. And then the third and I believe final September release I've got on this list is The Land of the Living and the Dead by Shauna Lawless. I'm very lucky to have an early copy of this in return for an honest review. This is the third and final instalment of Ghoul's Song, which begins with the children of gods and fighting men. This is just, I've out of this series I've read so far, two novellas and two main instalments, which you don't need to read novellas, they just added flesh to the story because I was enjoying it so much. All four of those works are brilliant. They are so, so good. Shauna Lawless has this quality to draw you in with this ethereal, magical, lyrical prose that also feels quite gritty and harsh at times. She's got great flexibility as a writer. I love the political machinations. We are thrust into late 10th century, early 11th century Ireland, and it is historical in many ways, following kind of the Viking influence on Ireland and King, I'm going to butcher this name, Brian Boru, who is one of the most famous leaders of Ireland. Sorry in advance for this and any book I talk about today for pronunciations. It is definitely my weakness and I really need to up my game with those. But yeah, don't trust me with pronunciations on here. And please don't be offended if I say any wrong as well. But I've talked about the historical side, but this is historical fantasy. It is also inspired by Irish mythology. We've got the Tuatha Du Danann and the Fomorians as well, two mythological tribes who have an age-long enmity with each other. And that is brought into the mix with Gaulsung. It is that kind of epic scope of a generational hatred for each other, brought into the more intimate story of our specific characters and the historical events happening at this time. I love the blend between this historical and mythological focus and Shauna Lawless is just a writer that is so, so brilliant and I cannot wait to 
read this finale, which I will be doing over the next week or so. And then also in or in September, sorry, I've got Adam Bede, which I know a grand total of nothing about. Other than that, it was written by George Eliot, and I've not read anything by her before, but I'm going to be reading quite a few texts, such as Middlemarch as well, which I may be talking about in a little bit. But Adam Bede is the first one up that I'll be reading in preparation for university. So this will be part of my Victorian literature module. And so we were advised to start some Dickens and Eliot before we head to uni. And so that is, I think, all my reads for set. September. And so it looks like it's going to be a great month, some re-reads, sequels, releases and some uni work in there as well. A great mix, quite a lot to get through, but I think I can do it. And so yeah, that's what I'll be reading in September. And then heading on to October, of course, a theme with this, the autumn season reading, will be the Bloodsworn Saga. Hunger of the Gods will be our read-long from the 1st of October to the end of October, as in this read-long we are reading one book a month. And of course it's a trilogy, Fear of the Gods comes out on the 22nd of October, and so it's perfect timing to do this. Hunger of the Gods, I think I prefer even more than Shadow of the Gods, and so I really cannot wait for a reread of this. And yeah, there's not much more to say alongside that. Basically the same as I said with Shadow. Always makes me very proud of Papa Gwyn rereading these books, and it's just incredible that I know I'm biased being his son, and people may think I'm only heaping praise upon these books because he's, he's my papa, but I just genuinely adore these books and I'm so lucky to have early access to them as well and be able to pick Papa Gwyn's brains all day long, even though I think I ask too many questions sometimes. But then I've got something that may not sound very interesting to a lot of people, but I've got the Cambridge Old English Reader, which I'll be starting in one of my modules this year for university at Durham University. I'll be learning Old English. Not completely, I would definitely not become fluent, but I'm making a start at it. And I'm not the most linguistically proficient. So I know I need to put a lot of extra work in, but I think my passion and my love for Old English and Old Norse will kind of filter through to make it a bit easier for me. And so I need to make sure I'm on the ball, get that work ethic in, and I'm gonna be reading the Cambridge Old English Reader, which may not be up everyone's street, but I will be talking about it on the channel and on the Brothers Grin over the coming months. Maybe a little bits that have inspired me. Of course, it'll be looking at Old English texts as well, so I'll be talking about them. But then hopefully, amongst all the uni work, I'm gonna be able to fit in some reads of my own. And for the most part, I won't be able to, but I just had to push in Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wong. I read and recently loved The Sword of Kaigen, which there's a review over on the Brothers Gwyn channel. And Blood Over Bright Haven is a different world, different characters, and I believe it's quite a dark academia-esque thematic book. And so I'm really looking forward to reading this. I know a lot of people have loved Bright Over Bloodhaven recently. Uh, Chris and Maz over on their YouTube have really loved it as well. And of course, mainly on their TikTok, they've discussed it, but they are new on YouTube as well, which is awesome to see them here. And I'm not sure if when this video comes out, the chat that me and my brother Ed had with them will be out as well. I'm not sure if it is, I'll have it pop up. But it was awesome having kind of the brothers, me and Ed, with talking to the sisters as well. And it was great seeing how they tease each other as me and Ed do as well. That was just awesome. But anyway, I've gone on a tangent. That's Blood Over Brighthaven. Returning to some uni reads. I mentioned some Dickens earlier. I'll be reading David Copperfield, um, which I, again, know basically nothing about. And if I love it, I will read Demon Copperhead as well, which... I believe it was number one on the New York Times top 100 books of the 21st century. It may have been a different list, but I think it was the New York Times. But it's a spin on, De on David Copperfield and showing how kind of the problems that Dickens presents are still present in the modern day. And so that depends on if I really enjoy David Copperfield. And so I haven't added it technically onto my list for October, but we will see. Reading some Dickens, Dickens is either hit or miss for me. I thoroughly enjoyed A Tale of Two Cities, I did not enjoy Bleak House so much. I enjoyed the murder mystery part in the latter third, but the first half was very dry and quite a struggle for me. And so he's an author I sometimes click with, sometimes don't. Hopefully David Copperfield is in the former category. But then I'll also be reading some more Elliot, and that is Middlemarch, which is, I believe, her most famous work probably. And again, one that it's always, a all these classics, it's really strange. You hear about a lot, but then if someone said to you, what are they about? I wouldn't be able to tell you a single thing. And Middle March is another one of those. But if you ask me again in October, I'll be able to give you a very different answer, hopefully. Anyway, 
And then I've got Cujo by Stephen King. Recently, I put a poll on my Patreon that I have as part of the Brothers Grin, saying I want to read some more Stephen King. Here are three or four that I want to read. Vote for which one I should read next, and then I'll dive into the winner. And Cujo, or at least so far, Cujo is winning. So that is one that I'll read in October. Of course, most of my physical reading will be taken up by university, but I'll still be listening to audiobooks, and I love Stephen King audiobooks. And it's October. Bit of horror, bit of Stephen King, some audiobooks. What more can you ask for? And then this is quite ambitious, and I don't think I'll be able to do it, but I'll put it in just in case I'm ahead of my reading. Obviously, in my mind right now, it's easy to say, yeah, I'm going to be ahead of my uni reading. I'm going to be so organised, and I'll have time for more reading. It's easy to say that. Whether in reality I'll do it is a very different matter. But hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll have enough time to dive into Jade War by Fonda Lee, book two of the Greenbone Saga. I just thought Jade City was great. I am hooked. I'm immersed. I'm invested. I need more of the story. And so hopefully I can dive into more of this world with Jade War, which many people, I believe everyone I've heard has really said that Jade War is better than Jade City. And then I think there's a bit of a discussion of is book two better than book three. But that's, uh, I think, caused a bit of, not controversy, but um, what's the word? It is quite divisive. And so at least that means that Jade War looks like it's going to be a great read for me and then that is October and of course what's going to happen at the beginning of every month I'm going to be reading Fury of the Gods by Papa Gwyn and this feels like the holy grail to me at the moment because it is a galley um, that was sent to Papa Gwyn and he's very kindly given me one to add to my shelves and so I feel like wherever I hold it I just need to I don't know put gloves on put the frame around it not let anything near it because these are the only copies we have at the moment Fury of the Gods cannot wait for this to be sent out into the world. There's been some reviews coming in for Fury of the Gods and they have just been blisteringly good. And it is just amazing to see all the love for Papa Gwyn and people say that this is one of the best finales ever. I think um, the translator um, for some of Papa Gwyn's books, and I think he's translated like Jabba Crombie and George R. R. Martin works and many other esteemed authors, I think the translator, I forgot for what country, he did a review recently and said that this is the greatest epic conclusion since The Will of Time. Oh, he translated The Will of Time. He said it is the greatest epic conclusion since Robert Jordan's The Will of Time. And so that's high praise indeed. And it is epic indeed. And I cannot wait for everyone to read Fury of the Gods. If you haven't bought it, what are you doing? Go and pre-order Fury of the Gods and have it ready for the first day it's released. But then I also have some Cormac McCarthy. I'll be going into my second year of university. So I want to start thinking about the dissertation that I'll be writing in my third and final year. And I think I might do a focus on Cormac McCarthy, but that kind of depends on what I think of the Border Trilogy. And so I'm gonna read all the pretty horses and see what I think of that. By the sound of it, by the praise of my brother Ed and what he's discussed about it and we've had quite a few chats what it's about what's thematic what he loves about it and what the focuses are it sounds like it's gonna be one for me and i've not read a new Cormac mccarthy book for over a year now uh by new i mean as in a book i've not read before i've reread the road i've reread blood meridian uh the last Cormac book i read i think was the passenger early 2023 and so i'm looking forward to diving into some more of his writing and then i also have dracula by Bram Stoker. Um, it's not in my Victorian literature module and I believe it actually, uh, maybe this is 1890s. I'm not sure actually when Dracula was published, but I just thought it might help me kind of get into that sense as well. A book I've been wanting to read for a long, long time, but also not on my reading list. And so it add a bit of context of kind of the influences of the time, maybe, but it's one that's been on the list and I thought I can sneak it in and kind of count it as uni work as well. And then I have The Will of the Many by James Eilington. So as I said at the beginning of this video, November will be an exam period for me. And so I haven't added a few uni texts because I might be rereading some I read in September and October, but they will be over by kind of the last two weeks of November. And so that's when I hope to fit in The Will of the Many by James Eilington, which I've just heard incredible praise about from two to Ramble and Ed and Patrick and just so, so many people. It is probably the most hyped about first book of a series I've seen for a long, long time. 
and I think book two is coming out in 2025, and so I need to jump on the bandwagon and read World of the Many. And it's Roman inspired in a school, pretty awesome, right? And then I also will hope to fit in Jade Legacy, book three of the Greenbone Saga. So hopefully I'll be done with that series in 2024. And of course, I said before, that I've had some divisive feelings. Some people adore the ending of the Greenbone Saga, some not so much but I'm looking forward to seeing what my take on it will be. And I think my brother Ed will also be reading this series, so it'd be cool for us to chat as we do that. But there we go, that is my not quite complete reading for the season of autumn. I've left a few gaps because of course, I'm a bit of a mood reader, so I'll add some audio books along the way. And also with uni, it can be a bit unpredictable. There may be different ways that I'm leaning and my complete, uh, timetable has not been released and so there may be some text that I need to cover that I thought I might be reading in December but I might need to read them in November so I've left a bit of a gap so I can fit them in as well. These seasonal predictions I'm usually kind of over half right but never completely there's always some come curveballs some that I add just randomly because I've heard of someone's raving about them an example for summer would be glorious exploits never thought I'd be reading that then my brother Ed raved about it I saw it won the Waterstones Dave of the Year award and it was quite short I thought let's try this out and I adored it and so I'm a bit of a mood reader and that often results in a lot of favorite books for me and so yeah this may not keep completely to the plan but for the most part, I think I will, especially as a lot of these are uni focused. But everyone, thank you so, so much for watching. That is what I intend to read during the months of September, October and November, which of course is autumn. And so getting into those months where it might get a bit drearier outside and we can feel cozy and uh, with a fire maybe inside with a cup of tea, reading a book. And that always feels quite nice. But everyone, thank you so much for watching. And please let me know what some of your books that you'll be reading in autumn are. But for now, as I said, thanks for watching and stay safe.